Hi, everyone, and welcome to our next EDW session called Moving the Needle on Data Quality, the Foundational Framework as Implemented by a 110-year-old Fortune 500 company. This talk is being presented by Prathyusha Kanchanam, who is the product owner of data governance, data quality, metadata, and data privacy at Mutual of Omaha. From logistical notes, all audience members are muted during these sessions, so please submit your questions in the Q&A chat window on the right of your screen, and our speaker will respond to as many as possible at the end of the talk. We also want to note that there is a linked form at the bottom of the page where audience members are able to leave evaluations for the session, and those are really helpful. So if you have a chance to do those, please do. All right, let's get started. Thank you, and welcome, Pratisha. Thank you, Natalie. Uh, I'm really excited to meet all of you. Um, we'll see more questions probably at the end of the discussion. So today I'll be speaking about uh, uh, a foundational framework that we have used and that has helped us to move the needle on the data quality. Um, so we all uh, see a lot of articles, a uh, lot of discussions going on where we say that you know data is the strategic asset and we want to use data as a differentiator. Uh, but at the same time, you know, you may have so many analytics initiatives and data initiatives going on, but they can only be successful if they are, if the analysis they provide uh, is useful, right? And for that to be useful and correct and accurate, uh, it is very important that we have the best of the data quality. And that is where I think uh, the data quality has a lot of importance. Uh, but oftentimes we see that, you know, while data analytics and data initiatives are taking uh, uh, so much importance. Uh, sometimes the data quality programs struggle to kind of uh, 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 establish in the organizations. And that is what I will be talking about. So that is an introduction. Uh, again, I'm the product owner of uh, data governance, data quality, uh, security, privacy, uh, and metadata at Mutual of Omaha. Uh, Mutual of Omaha is an insurance company, uh, 110 plus year old company. And uh, some of you may uh, know us from the Wild Kingdom videos, uh, we used to host that. Uh, and uh, as any 110 year old company, we have a lot of data. Uh, being an insurance company and being a 110 year old company, we have a lot of data, a lot of data systems, and uh, uh, the technology landscape is pretty complex. So today I'll be talking specifically about the data quality journey that we have taken. Uh, so covering how we got started, what was our roadmap, uh, what was the framework that we built that worked for us? And then also talking about the metrics uh, that we built and what is the strategic value add that this whole program is providing for the organization. Moving on to the starting point. So some of our challenges were, uh, as you said, a complex technology landscape. We had a lot of legacy systems, but then as we moved through the years, we also have the newest of the technologies. So, so the landscape itself is pretty complex. And then we also have a, a quite a bit of a siloed approach for so many years. Uh, so the SBUs were provided, uh, the SBUs were provided uh, uh, a lot of uh, independence as they built their systems. And as they were building their systems, uh, you know, they did not think about how the other SPUs or SSUs can use. So there was that level of independence where there was some integration and uh, discussions and everything uh, that happens. But there was that independent way of, okay, let me do the things. I need this problem solved. This is the data I need. And this is the data system and just kind of stand it up, right? Um, then we also see a lack of ownership in the sense that uh, there's no clarity and who is owning what because there is so much of inventory of assets and data systems and applications. So that is another challenge that we see. The other thing that we saw was the perceptions around the data quality itself. When I say perceptions, uh, like, you know, there was no clarity uh, on our definitions. So what somebody would consider uh, as, uh, you know, this system is at a quality that is acceptable. Somebody else may say that, no, it is not uh, because there is no, uh, the clarity was lacking and it was all based on people's perceptions and, you know, based on the discussions that they have. So it is very, very subjective in nature. There was no measurement in place. Uh, the other thing we saw was that there was no clear understanding of the data quality impacts, meaning that uh, we know there are data quality issues, but what does that mean? What is it impacting? Uh, uh, how can we improve efficiency? So we didn't have that. 
moving on to that so with all this some of the impacts that as you know any of uh, you uh, would identify is like you know risk exposure is one of the things right from the data quality issues that we may have uh, then there is a lot of report because of the data quality issues we are continuously kind of you know uh, having to resolve those issues or do the rework and uh, you know that is one of the things and then improper capacity utilization that is based because of, of we didn't know how what it was impacting and how it was impacting so we used to work on like you know any ticket that comes in for first in kind of a thing instead of working on the most prioritized kind of way the other pro impact we were seeing and this was big is like you know any new projects that were trying to be stood up they need to understand where the data is so the same data may be available in a couple of places and trying to understand which one is the source of truth which has the better data quality where should i take uh, the data from so there was those kind of discovery efforts that were really costing the organization so we looked at the challenges and the impacts and that is when the organization said you know we need an enterprise data governance program and we need to have data quality as part of it uh, so uh, when we stood up the enterprise data governance program we have uh, data governance, data quality and metadata and document content management were some of the things that we had as part of that. So after that, we kind of moved on to the roadmap. We started it with a maturity assessment. And again, like any of you might have seen, there are several maturity assessments on data. Uh, Gartner has one, Forrester has one, and uh, uh, Data Management Book of Knowledge talks about uh, the, the, um, the maturity assessment they have. CMMI has one. So, there are several of those, but because we hired a consultant to do, do our work, we use the maturity assessment that the consultant have. And this was not limited to data quality, but it was more limited, more the, the scope was broader, and it was about the entire data management and uh, data governance aspects of things. So we finished, uh, we, we knew what uh, maturity assessment model we were using. We went for an external assessment. And uh, I mean, it, at the conclusion was that you know it kind of revalidated the effort uh, analysis that we already knew probably right it, it was just revalidation of whatever we uh, understood as our impacts and challenges uh, so that came through in that assessment and uh, some of the uh, main things that they pointed out was uh, there is no clear definition on data quality there is no measurement that is happening and again those perception versus facts so those it was kind of that revalidation that we had and then the vendor also kind of, uh, the consultant also put through an execution roadmap on how they would execute the data quality program. Um, but for us, uh, because of how we were spread out into different SBUs, SSUs, and where we were in our journey overall when it comes to data, we said that we will uh, kind of start the program ourselves and establish ourselves. So we kind of adjusted a few things to kind of suit that. And the big thing is when we did the roadmap, we kind of took a step back and understood that the first thing as was very evident was to do the data quality definition and understand the scope of the program. What is that we are trying to address? So we kind of put that in place and then started to think about how do we do the roadmap? Like what is that we need to build into it? So at a very broad level, we kind of divided it into what is the reactive component of data quality and the proactive component. And I don't know if any of the articles would speak it in that way but that was very pertinent to us so if you think of it like you know we have data quality issues and we don't have a good mechanism or a good visibility into where the quality, uh, data quality issues are so that is where we were talking about reactive data quality mm -hmm. where we are having data quality issues in production and we need to kind of resolve that is a reactive mode but then we would have to first establish a framework for that and then we can move the organization towards proactive data quality where we can use the tools, where we can you know, establish uh, more the automated way of doing things so that you know, the proactive data quality piece would come into picture. So today I will be focusing more on that foundational piece, which will talk about the reactive data quality, but also how we pivoted that to the proactive piece that will be coming uh, next. And then we also have that foundation of uh, how do we monitor this, uh, how do we socialize, uh, what are our communication mechanisms, training, and all that. The other important part uh, that I will say this is because of the data governance, not just data quality. So we said that we need to have this alignment, the data governance alignment. Data quality was anyway part of the data governance. So 
how do we align with the data management communities of practice that we have so that was very important that and that was key to our success is what i can say so i'll probably talk speak a little more on that so once we did that uh, let's move on to the framework and how we built the framework so these are the different things uh, that we considered when we thought about a framework. We again said, what are the things we need to address as part of the framework? One is the definition and the scope. And what is our operating model? What is the ownership? How do we do that? How do we track the data quality issues? What should be the workflow? How do we prioritize these things? Because these were the, some of the things that some of the business stakeholders were asking, like, you know, we would like to see this. We would like to see this. And that is what we were trying to understand, like, need yeah. Uh, and let's think about these components as they build the framework. So then when we moved on to the framework, the first thing that we did was uh, let's first define the data quality. And this is where I can totally see that we leveraged the DIMBOG, the Data Management Book of Knowledge, and it has been absolutely useful for us, especially being the foundational framework that we were trying to do and where we were with our journey. It was a very good starting point for us to kind of think about how do we connect with all these knowledge areas. It was not just about data quality. It is about data governance. It is about how we operate together as an organization. So it was very, very helpful for us for the data to kind of you know, uh, to, uh, leverage the data management book of knowledge. And we just uh, adopted the definition uh, for data quality from there. And then we also did the dimensions, the data quality dimensions, and we kind of uh, um, provided the organization and also took the input from the organization. So apart from the data quality dimensions that are in the dim block, there was probably um, at least, one, I think there is, there is one that we added where the subject matter experts said that you know, this may not be something that, uh, you know, 100% data quality issue. But then I have not seen this trend before. Like, you know, we were supposed to expect 50% uh, of the policies come through in this way uh, in, in by the end of the quarter. But this quarter, we are not seeing those numbers. It has dropped pretty much or it has increased pretty much. Is that a, a true trend? Or is it some issue in the data pipeline itself that we are, we are uh, seeing wrong data? So they wanted something for that. And so we created one dimension for that, which was very specific to our organization. Uh, our rest of the dimensions are basically the you know, accuracy, consistency, uh, validity, the same things that we kind of uh, uh, see uh, across. Uh, the names may be a little different, but we adopted whatever was in the data management book of knowledge. And we not only did that, but as we were doing this, the whole data governance program was getting established. And so we said that this is a good work. Uh, we need to kind of adopt this for the entire organization because that would help us talk the same language. And we can kind of, uh, uh, you know, when we talk about any terminology, anything that we are talking about knowledge areas, they would understand. So we needed that standard language that we could use to understand each other. So we have an enterprise license for it. Uh, and we have been using it very successfully, actually. And uh, moving on to the framework, uh, uh, if I think of the definition and the scope and the operating model, the ownership, queue creation, workflow, and prioritization, we spoke about that. And we are in the, sorry, the slide was. So moving on to that, then what we did was we took the data quality policy and we also published the standard. So the data quality policy kind of was the overarching thing, kind of uh, hooking on to what we had in the data governance policy, actually. But then talking more specifically about the data quality and how we are going to operate and what does it mean for the organization, uh, you know. Uh, kind of laying that foundation. And we, then we also published a standard which was more talking about the dimensions that we are adopting and how we are establishing the ownership and things like those. And the next thing that we did was socialize across the organization. Again, this program was new, data quality program was new, data governance program was new. So we did a lot of roadshows is what we called. So where we would go to different themes and present uh, where we are in our roadmap, what we are trying to do, and how these are the st standards and the policies, and what we are trying to get the inputs uh, to some extent. So we were constantly 
uh, in loop with several of the teams and trying to use that as our input mechanism even as we build our framework. So going on in the same thing, uh, if you look at the um, data management book of knowledge, we have several knowledge areas established. So with those knowledge areas, then we said that, okay, let's kind of the, categorize these as data governance communities of practice and data management communities of practice. So we, we identified that and we introduced one more thing, which is data privacy, which probably will not see in the data management book of knowledge, but at the same time, being an insurance company that is heavily regulated, uh, uh, privacy was uh, on our uh, top of the mind for us. So, so that was something that we did not want to leave out, especially we wanted the privacy office to be more involved with any of the data initiatives so that uh, they are hearing and seeing uh, what the rest of the organization is trying to do and kind of provide their inputs and what are the you know, compliance and control mechanisms. So we wanted them to be as part of the entire journey that we were taking. So what we did was we had these knowledge areas in the communities of practice, but we also established what we called a data review of the projects. Uh, this is not specific to our uh, data quality piece probably, but data quality is part of this uh, component that is where uh, the importance is. Uh, so if you think of it, uh, any new project, any new data initiative that would happen across the organization will have to submit uh, a uh, data review request. And that would be coming to all these knowledge areas who are the representatives. And then the architect of that project would come in and kind of present what their vision is, what, are, what is that they are trying to do. Uh, and uh, all these knowledge area representatives sitting there, we had some standard questions that they, had, they would have answered even before coming in. So we would kind of go in knowing, uh, the subject matter experts would go in knowing what they are providing us. And then we would listen to their architecture and what they're trying to do. And then ensure that you know whatever standards and policies are being provided uh, from each of these knowledge areas, are they adhering to those? Are they not adhering? What is the recommendation we give? They may be a novel new case or, or new technologies being brought in or new uh, way of using data, so which may not be a standard or a, a policy yet. So that also drove what other policies are best practices that we need to do. So this was a data review that we used to do for any of the projects and have some follow up recommendations and they need to kind of close out on the recommendation. So I just wanted to kind of take time to kind of explain that because this was a huge value for us uh, because we were bringing all the knowledge area representatives into one room to kind of discuss what was happening in the organization for the new projects and kind of setting those new projects at least in the right way. And this is where we, uh, you know, data management book of knowledge or uh, the demo material really helped us. So apart from the, the 12 knowledge areas, uh, we also had data analytics as another communities of practice. So there were often times where they would come in and also work with us. Uh, so the three communities of practice, data governance, uh, data management and data analytics, we all work very, very closely. So it has almost become like, you know, this is how we work together and uh, pretty much known by the data owners and the stewards of the organization. And uh, going to uh, the framework, back to the framework. So we established the definition, the standard and the policy, and then we defined what is the scope. Or is it like the one specific data domain or should it be the enterprise the data or should it be specific uh, sbu by sbu kind of an approach um, then we said we went uh, all in we said uh, all enterprise data we know that adoption takes time uh, we were okay with that but we wanted to make it more as an we wanted to establish uh, the data governance and the data quality programs in such a way that the organization knows that this is for all of the enterprise and you know uh, make it that umbrella kind of a function, the centralized function who would be uh, working with each of these SBUs, SSUs, and even all of the data management functions and knowledge areas. So, so we established that. And for data quality also, we said that, yes, all enterprise data kind of falls into this. And then we said it is production data system that we are worrying about, no POCs or, you know, uh, the other initiatives that you are trying to kind of uh, stand up on. But then for the operating model was another important thing that we were thinking about. So we were a centralized organization. So there is a lot of questions, right? When we stand up a new program, is it centralized? Is it decentralized? What would we do? So I think we kind of went a hybrid way or maybe we can still call it a centralized uh, 
um, we, because we, as an enterprise data governance or data enterprise data quality, we were the centralized program. But the, for example, for data quality, if I take it, we were kind of establishing the framework, producing the standards and the policies that the enterprise has to adhere. We were monitoring and tracking. Uh, and we were that centralized function, but at the same time, we were not the ones who had data quality analysts uh, who would, uh, or stewards who would uh, look at the issues and kind of resolve the issues. That was still lying with those data system owners. So we had the centralized program management, whereas decentralized implementation is what you can say. And uh, the other thing that we established was the ownership because there was always that clarity uh, that was needed for the ownership. So for every data system, we started identifying who are the business data system owners and who are the IS data system owners. So we had owners and stewards, but at, at the same time, both on the business side and the IS side or the IT side, if you want to call it that. Um, we call it information services and that is what we have. So that was one thing that we identified and kind of established that as a almost a, uh, the owners and the stewards uh, were established and socialized and the you know the enterprise had one place to go and look up uh, to kind of have that information and then we moved on to how do we track these data quality issues what is that we need to establish we looked at some of the tools we tried uh, and we ended up saying that you know um, as we were not uh, getting into the tool yet let's just uh, establish something in jira which can track some of these issues and uh, our all other projects were using jira queues anyway so it was a good uh, way to kind of link into those projects so what we did was uh, we established a customized flow in jira and i'll kind of speak about that in the next slide and we did uh, when the consultant came in they kind of identified all these data quality issues that were in different use queues of uh, different teams so they kind of um brought that together so we ported all that into that queue so that queue was already loaded up with those data quality issues to start with the, for the program so for the workflow what we did was uh, we said that we let's say the data quality issue has been submitted but it can be any associate can submit data quality issue it was open for everybody if you see it in a report if you are just a user or if you are a steward uh, you can submit that issue and then it would first stop uh, at the data quality program uh, and we would kind of ensure that you know whatever data that they are submitting in the ticket is kind of enough for the stewards to act on if not we would kind of go back to the submitter and kind of get that information but then we would pass it on to the first to the business steward review so we kind of split up the steward reviews as business steward review and is steward review and uh, after both the reviews happen and the resolution happens it would again come back for closure to the data quality program and we would close it. What the reason why we differentiated the business toward and IS toward was like uh, the business toward would was more about okay, is this being uh, caused by my, uh, my by my data system? Is this issue really uh, something that is caused by my data system or is it something uh, further down the line or upstream? That is what we were trying to understand and they can always uh, reassign it to somebody if they think that it is not theirs, but some other data system is causing it. So we wanted to give them that. And then they also would co complete an impact evaluation. I think I'll go more into that in the next slide, but they would also complete an impact evaluation. And then they would pass it on to their uh, data systems IS2 word. The IS2 word would then look at the thing and kind of say that, okay, for this, we need this is the kind of resolution approach we need to take. And then make that decision, uh, document that decision, put an effort estimate there, and then they would uh, uh, link it to a different ticket. They would create a different ticket in their own team's uh, Jira and kind of link it here. That is where I was trying to say that, you know, uh, we were linking to their processes but not still trying to keep it separate so this was almost like you know where uh, we were not um, what should i say we were not uh, disrupting any of their processes uh, that is what we did so going more into the prioritization so that impact evaluation that the business towards uh, did was for a reason so when we first built it, we did not have that. But as we got feedback, we had been changing that workflow and uh, probably took us a few months uh, to kind of uh, get to a place where we say that, yes, the workflow is in good shape now and we don't have to change it anymore. And we have been uh, using that system, uh, process uh, for quite some time now. So the impact evaluation, um, basically they would see that, you know, how many other data systems are impacted by this uh, issue. 
what is the volume of records because often times what we saw was uh, there would uh, people would say there is a data quality issue and they might have seen a couple of records and they would not even look and query and to find how many records are there uh, in error and they would just blow it up into a big uh, issue sometimes sometimes it was true sometimes it was not so we wanted to know what is the volume of records that are in error so that we know that you know if it is a larger volume then i think it needs more attention and a higher priority so that is the reason we put it there and then we also said is there any regulatory impact is there any financial impact? Is there any customer impact? And because those are the things that were priority. And that is how we said, once the impact evaluation was done, um, then the data quality program would uh, kind of step in and kind of put a score to it. Mainly we, we had a weighted score for all of those factors and did a weighted score for it. And based on that score, we gave it a priority of either low, medium, high uh, for each of those uh, data quality tickets. And apart from this, uh, why, when we started this program, the entire organization was not working in an agile fashion. Um, the agile transformation came a little later. So the other thing that we did was uh, to adopt to the agile. We said that for each of the agile release trains, uh, almost the SBUs have is an agile release train for them. And so we said that, OK, for your train, what are the data quality issues that you are impacted by? Can you give us your top 10 that you would like to see resolved? So every train kind of marked those. So we brought all those together into the same uh, uh, Jira dashboard. And that would be the prioritized list that along with that priority level of high, medium, low kind of helped uh, um, the data system owners to prioritize those tickets. So that is the kind of prioritization uh, that we put in place. The other thing we did was uh, then moving on to the next thing. As I said, uh, one is, uh, you know, uh, the stewards will be allowed to kind of redirect the issue to another data system if they feel that it is the, uh, the other system that is causing it. And uh, we also did a wraparound kind of a thing when I said, uh, when I was talking about the Jira work queues, that is what I was talking about. We, we did each of the teams had their Jira queues, but they were operating in different fashion. Uh, so we said that we don't want to disrupt your process because that is where I think we need to get that engagement when you are establishing a new program. Because if we were disrupting and saying that the entire organization needs to come onto this queue and do this and not do whatever you are doing right now, you have to change your processes, it would not have been adopted to the level that uh, that uh, uh, you know to as much success as we have we were able to so we kind of said that you can continue with your process this is more like a wrap around we are collecting the metadata about the data quality here for tracking purposes for monitoring purposes but the ticket the actual resolution and this dlc process that needs to happen for the ticket will lay with your teams so that really helped us uh, in pushing the adoption to the team. So the other one that we had was, uh, you know, IS uh, uh, still retained the control of the resolution decision. So we provided them a framework where there are inputs for, the, for their prioritization. And we said that it is the data system owners who can prioritize now and think about what is a good resolution decision for this issue. And sometimes it may be a code fix, sometimes it can be a data fix, and sometimes it can be an enhancement. So. Moving on to the escalation. So, I mean, we start we, we, for the escalation. We just said that, you know, if you if, that's, if the issue is not moving, just let, let's start with the data system steward, if not the data system owner. We also in the parallel on the data governance side established data domain owners like, you know, for claims, we have a data domain owner for customer. We have a data domain owner. So we established the policy. We have data. So we established the data domain owners. So we said that, OK, we're slowly trying to move the organizations to the data domain concept and trying to make the data domain owners think about uh, the strategic initiatives with the data domains. So, so we are still on that journey. Uh, so but we started off saying that, you know, that can be one escalation path where we can kind of, you know, uh, move it up to the data domain owner and say that, OK, if this is uh, relating to the policy data. Maybe maybe they can kind of say that which is a priority. And if there are even like, you know, enhancement to projects that needs to be done for that. Apart from that, we also had, as I said, we had the data governance, uh, data um, uh, data management, and data analytics uh, practice leads for each of those communities of practice. And that 
all the three of them would be the triangle and that is where we would escalate some of our data quality issues if they were not getting results and it was a bigger uh, risk for the organization so we don't have a chief data officer yet but the triangular uh, leadership of those practice leads for those communities have practice uh, for, uh, operate functionally as a chief data officer for us so moving on to the metrics so we established the workflow we had the stewards we trained them and then we said you know we need to measure this in some way and kind of provide that visibility to uh, for the, at the enterprise uh, level we also needed it at the data system level we said because the agile trains were um, being built and established we said we need that apart from that we also established a key risk indicators um, and that is uh, we you we reported the high impacting issues all the way up to the operations risk committee and so we established the uh, key risk indicators for that purposes and only the high impact issues uh, were something that we reported but at the enterprise level we said that what are the number of data quality issues uh, by the status is it like you know business toward review is complete is toward review is complete or is it still in the to-do stage or both the reviews are complete but the resolution is still happening those kind of things and then we also said uh, what is the number of issues by the data system by the impact level and what are the few data systems where we are continuously seeing a high number of issues and we also did a monthly training and similarly we did the same thing for the data system level also so this is a mock kind of a dashboard that we had in a built in jira for uh, each of the data systems as you can see they we as you can see we had these data quality dimensions that were defined and we would say that you know how many data quality issues were for each of those uh, dimensions uh, so this was a good uh, view for some of the stewards or the data system owners maybe not for the individual uh, um, data quality analysts uh, or associates but uh, if uh, the data owner is seeing continuously a uh, higher number against a data quality di dimension that kind of help them uh, we also i think the readability is less but uh, uh, let me talk through it so this one is more around uh, the resolution decision itself whether it is a code fix or whether it is a data fix or the steward might have said that this is not even a data quality issue so how many are we getting like that reported as data quality issue when it is actually not or we also gave the option for the stewards where they said that you know okay we did our review but we are not going to fix this issue it could be for several reasons it, they're not fixing the issue because they know that there is a project going on and the enhancement that is happening through that project will probably fix this issue and so we don't want to spend uh, time now or it may be because uh, the impact uh, is probably uh, something that they can absorb so it can be that so the data system uh, uh, stewards would do uh, would kind of take the decision but then this visibility would help the data system owners to kind of look at that then we also had uh, something by the status so whether the business review has started business review completed is review started is review completed a resolution in progress resolution is complete and it is in data quality programs review or it is closed is it done and then we had a kanban board for each of those statuses and who is doing uh, within that data system so this was a view that the data systems have used very successfully it was very useful for them for the data system owners uh, to provide that view so apart from that we also did uh, the agile uh, dashboards uh, for the agile teams uh, so that was another view that we had so this is only one of the dashboards we have i thought this would be useful for some kind of uh, getting started uh, for anybody who is initially setting up their programs so moving on to the program itself uh, what is the strategic value add uh, that this program is providing the organization so that was another big thing that we had to think about like you know even as we are building smaller components and uh, you know making revisions to our program and kind of establishing the program the continuous thing we were thinking of how can we use the metadata that we have captured through these data quality issues as input uh, for some strategic things so that is where i will be covering some of the important stuff just to let you know, we have about five minutes until we're going to do a Q&A session. So if you have any 
questions, please feel free to put them into the Q and A chat. Thanks. Thank you. So we were like, you know, thinking about what is the analysis of the issue and how can it feed into the strategic inputs. So some of the things we had was, for example, if you are seeing uh, uh, wrong queries, that said, uh, that kind of meant, uh, showed that we need to do more data catalog. Maybe people are still not at a point where they are understanding the data. Or it could be a skill set uh, issue with the associates. So, uh, is there more training that we need to do because they don't understand the data? Or is it that they're not able to query the right way? It may be a intern or it can be an associate level. So that kind of fed into that. Similarly, is there a business process documentation is lacking? And maybe with the business process is not having the correct control. So the data coming in itself is coming in the wrong way and not um, enough uh, controls are put in place. So that could be one of the things or based on the patterns and the trends are we seeing a specific data quality dimension as high let's say completeness is a continuous thing that we are seeing then we need to think about what is the data strategy and how can we correct that and are there any technical ways of doing that how can we automate or how can we have those automated checks and we also said uh, let's identify the critical data elements so that we have to have some focused efforts and that will also feed into our data domain strategy for example so if there are data inconsistencies across the systems that kind of uh, showed us that, you know, we need to publish what are the trusted uh, source for the specific data. I want to kind of cover this uh, quickly because this one is something that has been very useful. And for especially for new um, programs, uh, this might help because this is how we would connect to those other functions in the organization. For example, the, let's put data quality program in the center. How would we connect to the data governance? So data governance would give us that uh, who is the data system owners and the stewards. That is where our connection point was. Uh, for the data domains, uh, what was the connection point? We identified the critical data elements uh, for those domains. And we established the data quality rules for the data domains. And we also use the data domain owners as our escalation point. Uh, when it comes to the risk organization, risk and compliance, we said that, okay, these are our uh, risk factors and these are our KRIs and continuously report on that so that we can uh, understand and put that pressure on the organization to have some of those uh, resolved. On the other side, if you think of it, we have the data management communities of practice where I spoke about uh, all those knowledge areas. So we, the data management communities of practice and data governance communities of practice continuously integrated with each other. We had is we always have a monthly meeting that we conduct together for the entire data owners and stewards and the stakeholders. Uh, uh, we almost get almost like a, a 300 to 500 people's presence on that uh, monthly meeting uh, where we are talking about the initiatives or the new policies, why we are doing uh, what we are doing kind of things. And then the data review that uh, where all the full knowledge uh, representatives were there, that was really helpful for us. And then we also clashed with Agile PMO and the data analytics uh, COP. And all this kind of helped us to pivot to that proactive data quality and establish those data quality rules and checks uh, that we will be able to ingest into the data quality tool. The, so that is where our proactive piece was coming from. So I'll stop on this slide and probably. Uh, so WINS is again, we have a central, centralized place. We have visibility. We are not disrupting. And we were able to ensure that the teams are able to adopt and establish. So we were able to move that needle for the organization. Um, challenges, as you all can see, there is always that resistance to change. There is additional work, if it, you know, it is considered as additional work. But we had enough mechanisms to kind of say that, you know, we are trying to make it easy for you, but this is a needed change that we need as an organization. And that prioritization also kind of helped them. Uh, I would suggest that uh, think about simple wins when you think of your uh, uh, programs. Have that one first follower. If there is a strong follower or one team that can speak about the program instead of yourself speaking about the program, that would be your best uh, thing to happen. Uh, keep the disruption minimum. Think about the steward competencies continuously and pitch for the proactive and align with the uh, important use cases. So that will help you to move the needle. So I'm seeing a question where they say to improve data quality from a data entry perspective, both technically and process wise, what challenges have you faced and conquered? So the very first thing that we faced was that business and IS kind of thing, right? Should IS be doing this? Should business be doing this? And that is where we started with the workflow and the framework with the, okay, 
there will be uh, stewards doing this, IS would be doing this, but then IS was like, you know, this is, we are trying to pitch it to the business value. We want to prioritize what is valuable for the business. So we would want the business to tell us, come in and pitch in. So that is where we cover uh, one of the challenges was. So there were several discussions leading up to that where we said, okay, every data system needs to have a business owner and an ISO, a business steward and an IS steward that we could use. So that kind of really helped us uh, to kind of uh, do that. And the other thing uh, we did was uh, the, that centralized, uh, like, you know, trying to keep the disruption minimal, that was another thing. So um, before that, there was a lot of uh, resistance before we put that model through when we said that let's move a centralized and there was a lot of uh, conversation that we had to do. And then we finally said that, okay, we are not disrupting each of the uh, queues. You can keep the queues same, uh, whatever you are using. Uh, because agile adoption was also going on at that time and we knew that some at some point in time they will all be moving to a similar kind of jira flows uh, so we said that let's keep the disruption minimal let's not do it twice uh, so the, we kind of addressed that by kind of trying to put a wrap around kind of a mechanism around it so those were the two things that i can think of and just the buy-in i think just the buy-in into the program was a bigger challenge so we had to do say, several ways one is from the top-down approach where we were constantly doing the roadshows and bringing in even executive management and practice leads for those communities of practice talk about it but at the same time we were establishing those champions with each of the teams and kind of a showing their successes and how some of the data we brought some of the data systems to project their dashboards and what they did and showed that success to others and you know the others wanted to pitch in and kind of do the same thing for their data system so that helped the senior um, leader buy-in and uh, did they have a certain amount of data literacy already and recognized um, I would say no. So if it, uh, for us, uh, when we started, it was a uh, the program establishment was not difficult because I think there was some level of risk factor compliance and uh, you know the data journey and the transformation that the organization was looking for and uh, you know that initial assessment that we did internally and the external assessment kind of spoke to that. So the program establishment was uh, um, okay, but then uh, for the framework we had to have. Uh, a continuous uh, socialization with the uh, stakeholders. So we brought uh, several of the stakeholders from the SBUs along with the practice leads into a room when we were establishing the program. So when we were initially establishing the uh, program and the framework, we used to kind of provide them a progress point where we would tell them where are we in the journey? How is the program coming along? What did we change as a program? Like, And I'm ta not talking just the data quality program because the data quality was part of the data governance program. So we would continuously provide them those updates, let them question us on why, our, why we are doing something or why not some other way. So that kind of helped us kind, you know, that those served as some, in some places that literal, you know, the um, providing the executives, the literacy kind of a thing on the data journey, because data was never looked at that way. So that helped, really helped us. So, so they would ask us questions and we can provide the materials and we could also provide them um, the, uh, the, what should I say, the reasoning behind some of the things and how that would pitch to any of the, strategic initiatives or the longer transformational journey that the organization was uh, thinking of. So that is where we were able to use the practice leaders uh, uh, kind of, you know, bring them in and kind of uh, that bridging that gap between the uh, executive team and the uh, enterprise data governance team to kind of do that. So that really helped us. I think that that is covers all of the questions that we have this afternoon. Um, feel free to continue networking through the Spot Me app and through the speaker pages. Um, I'm sure that Prathisha will be happy to answer any additional questions that you may have. Uh, but thank you for that amazing presentation. For those viewing the session, please take a moment to submit your feedback through the linked form at the bottom of the page. Uh, that's very helpful to us. This wraps up today's scheduled events, but the app is always open. So go hang out and have some networking in there. Uh, we will Zoom our live sessions tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern. Thank you all again. And we will see you tomorrow for the final day of EDW 2021. And Chris, I'll probably answer you uh, from the speaker. Uh, 
spot, uh, Chris. Thank you.